thank you, everyone, and thank you for bearing with us. We had some uh, technical difficulties, as, as happens when you're dealing with multiple languages. Um, so happy to have here with us today the Minister of Indigenous People from Brazil, Ms. Sonia Guajajara. Um, we also have with us the chairperson of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, Mr. Dario Mejia Montalvo. And finally, we have with us the indigenous rights leader of the Laikipia Maasai from Kenya, Mr. Ole Kaunga. Um, and they're here because, as you know, today was the opening of the Permanent Forum of, of and Indigenous Issues. Um, they'll all deliver some opening remarks, and then we'll open it for questions. Um, I just want to let you know that there is um, English to Spanish interpretation and also Portuguese interpretation, so please use your headphones. Um, okay, so we will start with the minister. Um, Ms. Guajajara, uh, please go ahead. Olá, boa tarde a todas, a todos e todes. Hi, I'm Sonia Guajajara. Um, I come from Brazil, from the Brazilian Amazon. And it's a, a pure joy to be here with my colleagues and share this, this table from different parts of the world. And we are here together to bring the, the, the voice of indigenous peoples to speak about the importance of the indigenous territories, um, our waters, our forests, um, our oceans. For us, what matters is the relationship of respect that we have with Mother Nature. And the world needs to recognize these forms of relationship of indigenous peoples with the environment and with its territories. We, indigenous peoples, are 5% of the world population, but we protect 82% of global biodiversity. If 80% of global biodiversity is protected by indigenous territories, then we need that the cultural rights, the livelihoods of indigenous peoples be respected that our rights be guaranteed and international agreements be upheld um, and implemented in local politics in our countries. We're here at a permanent forum um, that is an important space for participation for indigenous peoples from around the world. Um, and this voice um, that here is in the United States now it needs to be valued in other spaces beyond United Nations. Countries need to understand the urgency um, of the, the land use change. It's important to understand the change um, in the food systems. And we continue to um, emphasize that we need to guarantee um, the valuing of the social and bioeconomy of indigenous peoples. It's important to guarantee the conditions um, for indigenous peoples' management um, of the land, and including agriculture, uh, according to indigenous peoples' practices and traditional knowledge. Today, the president of Colombia um, um, did really important remarks about how the indigenous peoples are the guardians of the planet, the guardians of our environment. So it is important that um, the heads of state also can implement um, those speeches, um, valuing the livelihoods, respecting the cultures, and guaranteeing the self-management of territories by indigenous peoples. Today we're living a, a crisis, a, a climate crisis, an environmental crisis, um, a justice crisis. But all those crises, um, it's based on it's their sources in a civilization crisis, um, and we indigenous peoples are calling on uh, reforest the mines, 
uh, a call for solidarity, a call for fraternity, a call to understand、um, the roles of and territories of indigenous peoples for all of humanity. When we fight against illegal mining in our territories, when we fight against、um, oil companies in our territories. When we fight against、um, the expansion of industrial agriculture、um, around our territories, when we fight against the exploitation of、um, logging and timber, and the exploitation of our natural resources against miners that contaminate the waters,、uh, contaminating with mercury the waters that our kids drink, the ones who throw pesticides. In our agriculture,、um, that impact the mothers,、um, who are even pregnant, they get contaminated with the pesticides from industrial agriculture. When we do all this fight, we are fighting for the planet and for life. It's a fight for right, for respect, but it's also a fight for life. Today, I'm here as a minister. Of Brazilian state for the indigenous peoples, it's a once-in-a-kind ministry. It's a new ministry that's putting indigenous peoples in the center,、um, inside the executive branch of the government, beyond、um, bringing the fight for climate、um, in the center of public debate. We also want to put the. The issue of indigenous rights、um, at the center of the global negotiations, so that us, we indigenous peoples, can be not just in international agreements like the Paris Agreement,、um, the New York Declaration for Tropical Forests, but that we could also could have policies that are implemented in the territories to guarantee the demarcation and recognition of our indigenous territories, its protections. Uh, the safety of indigenous peoples inside their territories, and I say territories,、um, and I repeat, it's the it's the territories as our sacred lands, our ancestral lands,、um, including our waters, our lands,、um, our forests.、Um, for us, the territories is is all of that. And I finish here、um, by making a suggestion. I want to propose Brazil. Um, could be the next host of the World Indigenous Peoples Congress,、um, Alta Plus Ten. Like it happened ten years ago, and we think that it's important that we do it again,、uh, taking back the indigenous leadership and the collective principle of indigenous peoples' rights. And we do this by also making sure participation of indigenous peoples. Take place, so I end here,、um, Chair Dario, making that suggestion that we can work together、um, in the permanent forum uh, to um, to to take、um, to organize the next World Congress of Indigenous Peoples in Brazil,、um, taking advantage that I'm a minister of Indigenous Peoples in of my country. So that we can unite all this diversity of indigenous peoples from around the world, so we can discuss and define our strategies to continue bringing、um, our learnings to and our lessons, everyone. Never again a Brazil without us. Never again a United Nations without us, indigenous peoples. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Minister,、uh, Mr. Mejia Montalvo, por favor. Thank you very much, and good afternoon to all of you. I want to thank you for your kind words. Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm only. I understand the difficulties that Indigenous peoples are facing throughout the earth, especially in Africa. And also in some other regions of Asia, where unfortunately we are still behind in advancing in the recognition 
of indigenous peoples in the constitutions or in the legal frameworks. It's it, the states need to do this, and we need to have this path of recognition at all levels of the world, in all places of the world. Indigenous peoples need to be respected and recognized. And we also need that in those places, in those countries where indigenous peoples have already been recognized, that we can advance with concrete plans and accelerate the fulfillment of the rights of indigenous peoples. And here, the presence of our sister, the minister, uh, from the Minister of Indigenous Peoples of Brazil. Perhaps this can be a, a, an excellent example the states can follow. It's a very good practice in order to duplicate in all the countries, especially starting in those countries that have already recognized indigenous peoples. And we are in the, at the 22nd session of the Permanent Forum on indigenous issues here at the United Nations and the principal topic that has to do with planetary, human, and territorial health is the main theme and also climate change, a rights-based approach. We will have a lot of contributions, a lot of debates, discussions, on, and this is the custom that we have here at the Permanent Forum. This is on our agenda, but at this time we want to really call attention to the need that the states have, maybe a need that sometimes we feel that they do not really value because it's not a need for the elite, but rather it's a planetary need to have the presence of indigenous peoples in the decision-making spaces when we're faced with these uh, constant global crises, and especially one of the things that they that we are taught normally in the educational systems is that there are certain resources that are infinite, and that's why they're not really highly valued. And there are other resources that are scarce, and that's why they are worth a lot. But the pandemic really showed us that this is not completely true, that those resources that were considered infinite really are scarce. And those things that were limited are very abundant. So these are to give two examples. For us, they taught us that time is infinite. But today we realize that that's what we least have. We do not have enough time as humanity. And if life were long and we could conserve it, maybe we would have time, but we're, we don't have that capacity as humanity to continue sustaining life here on this planet. Therefore, time is a very scarce resource at this moment in history. And then also we were taught, especially in economy, in an economic sense, that human creativity was scarce and therefore that intellectual property is very expensive and that's what we live from and that's the order of things but today we are really realizing and the pandemic taught humanity is that cre human cre creativity has no limit and these are things that we have in common and if human creativity is limitless then here we are as indigenous peoples we want to contribute creativity, knowledge, value systems in order to face these global crises. As indigenous peoples, we are not raising level, saying that we're superior or levels of superiority, nor are we saying that we need to do uh, revolutions or anything. No, we're saying that our values and our knowledge really has to be recognized in order to advance. But the governments need to have humility and be consistent in order to recognize that the solutions until now that have been raised have not been effective. They are not resolving these global crises. And so they need to be consistent to recognize that the international commitments, the declarations, should really con be converted and turned into concrete plans, recognizing the rights of indigenous peoples. And I want to continue finalizing this by thanking my 
um, sister minister from the Minister of Indigenous Peoples, and we would like to have that conference of Alta Plus Ten to have it and for it to be fulfilled in Brazil. It's a very a very important news for Indigenous peoples of the world, and that will really push forth um, and inc encourage the governments to support the second uh, conference on Indigenous peoples here at the United Nations. We will work very hard to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, it's a great honor to be here. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, and also uh, the Chairman of the Permanent Forum it's been second session. I'm here to resonate uh, what my colleagues uh, have said, but also uh, resonate with what uh, the grand opening of the permanent farm was today. I think uh, indigenous peoples bring a lot of ancestral wisdom uh, in terms of also being part of the solution to climate crisis. Uh, but the problem is that been, they are continuously being uh, kept aside, displaced from their territories to the extent that they lose uh, ground on which they have believed for the common good that they have always done for this world. It is there's evidence to suggest that territories that are managed and governed by indigenous peoples are much more diverse in terms of uh, natural resources, but also they produce a lot of common goods for the global world. I think what is happening right now in terms of indigenous peoples' lands and territories I think issues to do with the colonial uh, conservation is becoming more traumatic to indigenous people. People are being displaced from their lands, people for uh, extractive industries, uh, for logging of their forests, their water is being commercialized, and indigenous peoples have always kept uh, these resources for the common good, for collective good of all. And this is what the message that we had this morning and the, what we are actually calling upon uh, government to respect uh, the rights of indigenous peoples, their uh, right to collective uh, 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 territories and collective tenure of rights. In July last year, in Africa, Kigali, a conference on African protected areas had made a number of resolutions and a Kigali call to action in which government agreed uh, to stop further expansion of uh, territories uh, that are called uh, conservation areas. But what we continue saying is we see a number of communities uh, being displaced from their land. They are, they are being, indigenous peoples are becoming actually refugees, climate refugees, but also government are creating their own refugees because of moving people away from their uh, homes. A case of Loliondo in Tanzania is a case on which the permanent forum actually issued a statement about this and there are people already being kept away. I think what it needs to be done uh, and for this uh, to continue happening uh, is that indigenous people, uh, government needs to recognize uh, and respect laws and their own constitutions that indigenous peoples, whatever they are, are part of the solution to climate crisis. And if you want, uh, and uh, we all of us are working towards a healthy ecosystem, healthy uh, environment, and also healthy people. And for, for this to happen, justice, rights must be respected. I think uh, uh, what other uh, mechanism can be brought in is I think dialogue between indigenous peoples and, uh, and government to also bring up other co-creation uh, uh, co or co-management of these resources for the benefit of all, of all, instead of moving people away from their lands. And I think to me this is very important to avoid much more conflict in these areas, but also to, uh, if we continue moving people away from their lands and territories, we cannot meet the goals, SDGs goal. We cannot meet uh, the uh, global biodiversity goals. We actually be missing the target. And for this to happen, I think uh, uh, we need to exactly do what uh, the government of Brazil is doing, in ensuring that people are the center of conservation, and also what the president of uh, Colombia said this morning, that at least uh, people should not be displaced for capitalistic kind of gains. And this is exactly what African's government need to do. There is no risk respecting and recognizing indigenous people's rights. In fact, the biodiversity of both uh, uh, ecosystems and people 
is what re bring real uh, uh, benefit of biodiversity. And to me, this the message to the African government, but also a number of the African court has made a number of very uh, progressive rules in terms of uh, government to stop uh, a displacement of people. For instance, the, the case of Ogiek in Kenya government, and um, and also uh, uh, which, uh, the African court ruled that uh, Ogiek are indigenous peoples and they should not be replaced for, uh, displaced from the Ogiek, uh, the Mao forest. These are some of the key things that we really need to respect so that we can all uh, live in harmony with the environment so, and we can all collectively work towards the climate crisis. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And now we will just open the floor to questions. Stefano. Thank you, Stefano Vaccara, La Voce in New York. Uh, this uh, first question um, to the minister and the chairperson on uh, the speech that Secretary General uh, Guterres uh, did um, for the opening of the event. If there was something that you expected I mean, was the speech exactly what you were expecting, or if you could have inserted that a, a topic or something that you didn't find? And then uh, about the situation in Africa, we heard the last years that in Africa is becoming again a field of uh, competition between new powers coming there to invest. So China is is ahead of the uh, United States, has to catch up, and so on. Um, what is your opinion about what this, is it, is it being Chinese, uh, if you want help to Africa, if you want to call it help, or, or, or new initiative in investing in, in Africa, have, have been like where you wish it will be? Or you have a message for, who have a power wants to come and invest in Africa? Do you have a message for uh, from them? Thank you. Who would like to start, Minister? Oh yeah. yeah. I'm gonna continue to call um, the in the in the speeches um, the respect to indigenous peoples, um, to indigenous peoples' rights, to the livelihoods and that every speech about speech and justice uh, to be implemented in practice. Um, there is a lot of talking um, about respect, but uh, indigenous peoples don't feel this in, the daily, in their daily lives. Um, so I, I, I always emphasize that we need to implement um, the, the, the rights and the justice, and not just but in the speeches. Uh, Thank you for your question. First of all, the, the sec General Secretary had not been for a very long time to the sessions of the Permanent Forum. I think that maybe the last time that, um, that a General Secretary attended was in 2011. So I think that it was very valu valuable that he was there at the opening of this 22nd session. And then I do agree with what my sister, the minister, says here, that we always celebrate the good declarations that come from um, leaders, but we need to advance in the UN system so that in the decision-making spaces we can advance in equal footing inequality to put on the same level traditional systems, knowledge system, author traditional indigenous authorities. We've never delegated our words or our, um, so we need to advance in the dialogue and we need to be on equal footing. But we do recognize that there are good declarations and manifest statements Yes, I know you have to leave in a, meet, in a little bit for the meet, to go to the meeting. Mr. Ole, um, stay uh, to address the, the last question. Yeah, uh, thank you so much about the question about uh, uh, investment in Africa. I think Chinese are not the only ones uh, actually uh, investing in Africa. And I think from the Berlin, the 1880s uh, uh, Berlin Conference, Partition for Africa, 
I think uh, there is now another second kind of partition on Africa in terms of investment of different streams of work. One of, uh, 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 one of the issues here is African government are torn in between. They need income to be able to pay the cost of their, uh, to, to, to offer services to their own uh, citizens. But at the same time, uh, they are negotiating power in terms of uh, being able to negotiate for the, be for the betterment of their own people is actually very weak in terms of uh, a number of issues. There are a number of two, a number of investment. Chinese are coming in terms of infrastructure uh, investment. They are all over Africa. Uh, the case of uh, Lolionda in Tanzania is not actually a Chinese issue. It's an Arab, uh, it's an Arab issue where a, 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 a hunting ground is being created for, for uh, uh, from a Maasai land. If you look also, European governments, I come from an area where uh, renewable energy companies are, are displacing people because of creating renewable energy. So uh, the, what the question will be, which one is much more better? Th those are fairness in terms of using the UN getting principles on business and human rights. These are the questions that are at play. But uh, to, to be honest, the, uh, 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 Africa is getting uh, a raw deal from all these kind of invest streams of, streams of income. It's only, um, uh, it's only, another question will be, which, which is a better deal? And I think that's a question that are, uh, uh, European as well as uh, uh, other governments need to respond to this. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We thank you all, and uh, good luck in your next meeting. Thank you, everybody.